And it felt like he got going quite quickly without really in any struggles as a, as a young boy coming from France at 22. It feels like he settled in quite quickly. And then Moreno as well, he, he, moving in January is tough as well because you haven't got the summer to acclimatise. You're literally thrown straight in. He was thrown into the team straight away because Luca Dean got injured. And he kind of hit the ground running to it to an extent as well. So you're saying about it being there to aid performance. I think you can tangibly see with the last few signings that that, that, that is working. I mentioned the position where you could use Mings and Concer as your Premier League centre half, and then you've got those two giants who've who've gone all who've, who've gone all the way in the, mm. in the Europa tournaments before. You can mm. play those two in the in the European games, it's and it doesn't like, feel like you're you doesn't feel like you're weakening it, but you're you're just playing to your strengths almost, aren't you? The 1874 show by the Villa View. Hello, welcome to the 1874 podcast. I'm your host, Dan Bardell, joined by the Athletics' Greg Evans, my friend and yours. Greg, it's been a few weeks since we did a part. Plenty of golf in the tank, I'm imagining. Plenty of work as well, I know. But how are you? I'm good, thanks, Dan. Yeah, uh, I missed last week. I was, I, was, I was enjoying doing the regular weekly ones. So, yep, good to be back. Played a little bit of golf, had some big competitions, lost in all of them. What? No, won in one of them, actually. So, yeah. I mean, you're saying you enjoyed doing them as if that was as if we didn't do it because of me. It was you that cancelled doing last week, not me. Last Greg. week was it? Yeah, yeah. Well, I got a text in the morning saying can't do it today. Sorry. <laughs> that's, wasn't that's that exact, yesterday? That's, no, no, that was exactly that was it. No, because I couldn't have done yesterday. That was that was that was exactly what happened last week. But anyway, we'll leave our internal disputes internal. We won't even. Though I have just dragged it up on the podcast anyway. Greg. Villa signed Pau Torres yesterday. We did speak quite a lot about Pau Torres in yeah. the last podcast we did because we've known it's coming for a few weeks. He's been away. He's got married, had his honeymoon as well. I presume he went to Bodymore, was it yesterday or the day before? He's, he's been and seen the facilities now, met Unai Emery, met Monchi, met some of the players as well. A, g- a good signing. Do you, do you think he'll come straight in now for, for Warsaw and be involved at the, the weekend? Or do you think he'll take a bit of time to, to bed in and, and, and help himself? I mean, look, he'll be he'll be around the place now. He's in the door, isn't he? So he'll be at Warsaw um, at the weekend, I'm sure, uh, unless unless Emery decides to to play some of a young, some of uh, bring us some of a younger squad, which typically managers have done for the first pre season friendly. In, They'll have to, won't they, in the squad, in terms yeah, of the squad. By. Yeah, I mean, what we'll probably see is we'll probably see some of the youngsters involved. Um, uh, this weekend, uh, certainly in the group anyway, in the squad, um, and then on Monday or Tuesday, a couple of those will be will be moved on um, or, or told that they can go. Um, I know a few deals that are quite close to being done by with some of the youngsters that um, you know that won't really feature in and around the first team this year, um, and then the others who are a bit closer will be taking on the the US tour. Which uh, which is, which is midweek next week. You know the players fly out um, and have a couple of weeks over over in the US for the for the three games. So yeah, it'd be a good chance for some of the youngsters to um, yeah to get a feel for it this weekend. The others will obviously get extra time in America. Um, and yeah, to go back to your Tyrus question, I'm sure he will be there. Uh, whether he features or not remains to be seen. Um, but the certainly the the timing in the US will be his time to get settled in and get to know the players a bit better. And look, that's what trips are there for, aren't they? Mm-hmm. They're there for the new players <clears throat> to get a little bit closer um, to, to some of the current ones and for the manager to instill some of his methods. As signings go, actually, someone coming from abroad who's never played in this country before, he's actually got quite a lot of things going for him because Villa have got a, a high Spanish-speaking contingent in, in the squad. The manager's obviously Spanish speaking, and he's played under him f- f- for years before. He'll probably know Monchi as well. He'll definitely know some of Emery's backroom staff. So as bedding in goes, it's probably going to be easier for him than it would be for for a normal person coming in for, from La Liga. And I thought you, you did an interesting tweet yesterday about what happens when, when yeah. players sign. Could you just go into a bit of detail around that for for people that didn't see? Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure you do loads yeah. of interesting tweets, Greg. But I, I saw that one <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, look, you know, it's obviously it's, it's a unique thing for, for for Torres because he was born, you know, in and around the Valencia sort of area. So he's been at Villarreal all of his life. Um, uh, he had one loan spell at Malaga, but he knew he was going back to Villarreal. So that is the area that he's grown up in. He is a bit of a homeboy sort of thing. You know, he, he gets um, homeboy. Is that the right word? Homebird. Homebird. <laughs> homebird. 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 <laughs> I think, I think a homeboy is more of a gang affiliated thing to, to be honest, Greg. I don't think he's in a, I don't think he's in a gang. I don't think we're suggesting I'm that. Bird. I'm bird. That's what I meant to say. Um, so yeah, look, you know, he's he's 
he wasn't in a rush to leave Villarreal in previous years um, when lots of other clubs were interested in him because of the fact that he's, you know, he likes his local roots. He's got friends that he still speaks to from school. Obviously, a long-term partner who he who he married this year. Um, so, so yeah, look, he was very settled in Spain and at Villarreal. Um, we we saw his emotional yeah. uh, speech when he when he left. That was that was. Uh, put out on the, on Twitter and, and other social media accounts. So it's going to take a little bit of time for him to get used to Birmingham, England, the new surroundings. As you say, the fact that he's worked under Emery already will be a, a huge head start for him because he'll know exactly what the manager requires. He'll know exactly what the manager wants. Um, and the support network that will be around him at Villa now is very big and it's really impressive. Um, you know, we. I think for, from from speaking to lots of people across the Premier League, Villa have one of the strongest player care departments now really? in the Premier League. Yeah, really impressive. You know, it's it's led by a guy called called Phil Roscoe, who spent a lot of time at Liverpool. Um, you know, another club that obviously signs a lot. Of, I presume Gerard bought him in. It was part of that, yeah. yeah. But you know, Emery and and his coaching team are fully bought, buying into uh, buying into it as well. So it's not a, a case of. Um, what works for Gerard doesn't yeah, yeah. work for guys. It, it does very much a buy-in. And look, you know, Roscoe and his team um, have assisted the, the the coaching team as well with various things because obviously they're all Spanish and, and relatively new to England to, to, yeah. to some extent as well. You know, Damien Vidigani, for example, it's his first experience in England. Some of the other coaches as well um, have, have worked with Emery at Arsenal, but not all of them. So there are little things that, uh, new people at the club need to get used to. You know what typically tends to happen when a new player comes is they have like an induction meeting um, with various uh, important people at the club. The player care department will then um, go through various bits of history at the club, um, names of staff members, um, give them some advice on living arrangements. Uh, you know if they have any children or. Um, I don't think Torres has, but if they have children, then, you know, where they're likely to go to school. Uh, just things like that. And it's, you know, it's, it's really basic things like setting up bank accounts and, you know, getting a phone that's got a, an English SIM card. And, you know, some of these things sound really basic, but when you, the the reason that that department is, is set up at Villa is to aid performance. It's to take all those little worries away from the players and just allow the players to focus solely on training and performing um, and when all the little things that are you know niggling issues are taken care of it just allows the player to be much more free in his job to go and perform and hopefully that's what you know will help Torres settle in if you look back to last season it was very similar to Diego, Diego Carlos coming from Sevilla um, you know had never experienced English uh, England before didn't really speak much English his English has improved massively he came with his wife and a couple of kids they had to relocate into the area and find a find a, a new school for for the children um, you know which they did and then for Carlos you know it was even tougher because he got that injury just two games mm. into the season so you know he needed almost a bit of extra care so just to keep his mood and, and spirits high um, and then Alex Moreno coming in from um Betis in uh, in January had a similar thing, so so yeah, it's going to take a little bit of time. I think Torres, obviously, you know, class player. We've we've seen that over the years. Whether he will go straight into the squad will depend on um, you know performances in training and and the competition from elsewhere. Quite interesting. I find that player care stuff quite quite interesting. Obviously, we all know what happened with Juan Pablo Angel when he came to Villa a long, yeah. long time ago. Like you just basically left to your own devices. Off you go. Can't speak any English. See what you can do. Settle yourself in. But you think back to some of the the last few. So on, it's hard to judge Carlos and how he would have settled because obviously he got injured and we didn't see him on the pitch. But that player care would have been in when Kamara came, and it felt like he got going quite quickly without really. In any struggles as a, as a young boy coming from France at, at 22, it feels like he settled in quite quickly. And then Moreno as well, it, you know, moving in January is tough as well because you haven't got mm -hmm. the summer to acclimatise. You're literally thrown straight in. He was thrown into the team straight away because Luca Dean got injured. And he kind of hit the ground running to it to an extent as well. So you're saying about it being there to aid performance. I think you can tangibly see through the last few signings that that, that that is working. Yeah, and that's kind of what I've been saying for for, for a couple of you know, in previous podcasts now, for, for two, three, four seasons, Villa have been building a modern infrastructure around the club. And that just allows, they, they are now a, 
a very well set up club in terms of the structures in, in and around it. Um, you know, the medical team and and, and the performance centre at, at Bodymore Heath is exceptional. Um, you know, we've seen the success of the of the academy, the loans department now that that wasn't around three or four years ago, and then the player care department is is you know slightly different. There's a there's a girl who works there called Sophia as well. She's a Spanish speaker. She speaks a couple of other yeah. languages, and that you know massively helps as well. Previously, Villa had um, uh, a lovely lady called Lorna, Lorna McClelland, and yeah. she was the first player liaison officer, I think, ever to be included in a Premier League club, and that was under Graham Taylor, I think. Um, and she did a wonderful job, you know, really, really nice lady. The, so many so many players speak highly of her. I remember Benteke um, was one player that really benefited from, from her work. But she was pretty much alone. There's an actual mm. team now in place. So it just takes some of the pressure off that one individual and that means that other people can chip in. And it just gives the players this sort of 24-7 care. And it's not just foreign players. You know, people like John McGinn might need things and, and he, he knows that that player care de- department is available for him and anything he needs. So it's a, it's a, it's a small part of helping Villa progress forward. Um, and look, you know, with Torres coming in, it's a key, um, a key area to look at because he's, he's going to be assisted. I find that kind of thing really interesting, like the inner workings of a football club, all those tiny things that you wouldn't really think about or you don't ever really see in the, in the media because everyone's talking about transfers and performances and, and whatnot. I find that kind of stuff really, really interesting. On Power Torres, we spoke kind of last podcast that you think we think him and Mings can play together because of the way Villa have their right back tuck it in and it almost becomes a back three at times. We think they can play together. But Villa are in quite a fortunate position here that they don't have... Like, he's not the most physical of centre-halves. I think he's a really good footballer, but he isn't the most physical of centre-halves. Like Carlos, you look at him, he's a, he's a man-mountain, so you'd imagine. <clears> even <throat> Actually, I felt in his first game against Bournemouth, he was a bit taken aback by the physicality <laughs> of Kiefer Moore up front. But they're in a fortunate position now where the centre-half area and, and the environment is so, so strong. They don't have to put him straight in. He can take time to, to acclimatise. And in fairness, Mings and Conte probably deserve to start the season after Villa's defensive record at the back end of last season as well, don't they? So... He, he'll have time. He won't have to just come in and, and hit the ground running. It's it's not a great example, but remember when David De Gea, who's, who's obviously Spanish, started at Manchester United and he like a little boy. Like he, he really struggled with the physical side of it, and then he kind of grew into it and, and got his bearings. But he had to he had to play through all all yeah. of that. Villa are in the fortunate position now where that area is so strong. I don't think he has to come straight into the team. You can maybe bed him in in Europe where he might feel a little bit more comfortable because he's got that experience. I think so. I mean, look, it's clear that Emery loves him. You know, he 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 was he was one of the first names that was mentioned when Emery joined. So it was always a case of if we could have got Torres, then let's let's get him. And, and Villa were able to do that. So I do think he will be in, at the forefront of Emery's mind, and he will be trying to get him into that team. I'm sure. Um, but yeah, as you say, there is no pressure to 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 put him in straight away. If you look back to last season, Carlos was settling in really well throughout pre-season and then got that obviously horrible injury um, just early, uh, two games into the season. So we didn't really know how, we don't know how good he is in England yet, do we? No. You know, he, he, did, could... he did a nice ping against Wolves. That's about all I've got from him <laughs> so far. Yeah. Potentially, he could have been even better than, than Mings and, and Konza. We just don't know because we haven't seen him play enough. So it's a bit of an old cliche, but again, he's going to be like a new signing as well, isn't he? Yeah. If if, if um, he can stay fit and have no setbacks and get through pre-season really strong. So there's even a potential option of of, of um, Carlos and, and Torres playing as a pair. I mean, if, you, if you'd have looked back a couple of years ago, you might have said, wow, imagine if Filler could get those two in their, in their team because both are Europa League um, winners now. Mm-hmm. Experienced defenders. I mean, Tor- Torres is only twenty six, and yeah, he does have this. Um, um, is that, what's that noise at your end of mine? It's me with the window open. Oh, right. It's like I live on a new new builder state, so there's always that stuff going. I probably should have shut the window in fairness, Greg, but it's very hot in my office, so I didn't want to. No problem. I just didn't know if it was something at my end that I'm no. trying to stop it. Um, yeah, so you know, T- T- Torres is at a good age, twenty six. Is it? Yeah, twenty six. Yeah, so. He's had enough years to experience, you know, regular football um, and work on some of his weaknesses, which has been his physicality. You know, he's not this sort of all-imposing defender. And perhaps that is why some of the other 
you know, bigger champ clubs that are in the Champions League decided not to go for him. We'll never know for sure. Um, but I do think I do think Villa have got a very good defender on their hands here, and it would be interesting to see how Emery looks to mould him, whether he settles into the Premier League quite quickly, uh, whether he'll be used more in Europe or not. Um, or just a mixture of the two. But yeah, look, to have four strong centre-halves like that um, is impressive. And I just look back to Kamara's start last season under Gerrard. If you think back to that Bournemouth game, he was just a little bit eager to do too much. He was making too many fouls and one of the fouls resulted in a free kick that allowed Bournemouth to score. Um, I think he made the most fouls in, in that game out of any Villa player in the season. Um, so... It would be nice for Torres just to have a little bit of time to sort of be eased into it, I think. Yeah, I mean, to be in fairness, our first league game as well, you know, straight in at Newcastle away. That's a, that's a tough place to start, isn't it? So, you, Villa are almost in, I don't think this will happen, but you're almost kind of in the position where Emery's obviously trying to build a squad to compete on, on two fronts in the Premier League and in Europe and obviously the other Cups as well. You're almost in the position where you could use Mings and Concer as your Premier League centre-halves. And then you've got those two... Giants who've who've gone all who've who've gone all the way in the, mm. in the Europa tournaments before. You can mm. play those two in the in the European games, it's and it doesn't like... feel like you're. It doesn't feel like you're weakening it, but you're you're just playing to your strengths almost, aren't you? Do you see what I mean? I, yeah, I don't think that will happen. I don't think that will happen. But Villa are in a position where they where they could do that. You mm. can, Villa's strength last season turned out to be at the end that it was the continuity of the same people playing every week, and that's why Conte and Mings's partnership ended up being so good because they were so well drilled in training. And they knew exactly what they were supposed to be doing, and they they played nearly every game under Emery. I think Mings maybe missed one. I think Man City away, but I think other than that, it was those two for the duration of of, of Emery's time at, at the club. So. You do you lose that continuity if, if Torres and Carlos are having mm. to wait a couple of weeks to, to play with each other. But I think it's I think that's interesting. I think it's something that I don't think it will happen, but I think it may be a consideration. I think so. I do think it's a really good point. I, I I think Memory will be wanting to try and get more of a settled team and use his best team sort of 80, 85% of the games, whether they're in Europe or the Premier League. I think if he can do that, then he will. And, and he'll obviously have to change, um, you know, change players to keep them fresh. Of course, he's going to have to do that. But the five subs will work in, in Villa's favour now massively because they're in European competition. Um, you know, the discussion at the time when, uh, when the five sub rule was coming in was that it was always going to benefit the bigger and better teams, which Villa are now one of because they finished in the top seven and have qualified for Europe. At the time, Villa were a mid-table club trying to get into Europe. So their argument was, mm, not sure if we fancy, you know, and with Dean Smith in charge, not sure if we fancy the, the, the five sub rule because that's going to benefit everybody that's above us, but not really us as a new club coming back into the Premier League trying to establish ourselves again. Um, but now Villa are in a slightly different sphere, aren't they? They're, you know, they're they're looking to kick on. They're looking to stay in in European football, and the five subs will work. So, um, I think what's going to be really key now is how Emery manages each game. Um, you know how he uses those fifteen, sixteen players. Um, uh, you know who will be the real core of the team. Uh, you know well enough. And I think, look, if if Villa ever got to a stage where they could roll Carlos and Torres out in Europe and Mings and uh, Conza out in the Premier League and there's still be no impact. You're looking at, you know, they're at Man City's level almost then, aren't they? Because they've they've, yeah. they've, they've, they've developed a style where any player can come into any position and there not be a change. And that's just really difficult. But that's almost, it's almost kind of done that in some games, in some way, some way <laughs> sorry. I remember that Newcastle game. Best game, one of the best games I've actually ever seen at Villa Park. One of the best performances I've seen from Villa from top to bottom. But then Donker had not played for months. <laughs> yeah. And he came into that game and he literally looked like he played there every week. That him and Louise had been the partnership every every single week. It was it was seamless. So I do think because Emery's so meticulous and because of, of the way his methods are, he leaves no stone unturned. Everyone knows exactly what they're doing. I do think. I do think that the players can just. I think we can. I think almost can do that. And if we get in a couple of bits bits of more quality in the front front positions, that are quite well set in defence and, and and midfield. Now, I would say it's the it's the attacking areas they 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 need to address. Maybe right back as as well. But I think Villa almost can do that because of the manager. 
I think having this season will help because there's a head start. There's eight months of working with Emery already. So all the players that are currently there know exactly what he demands. I just think with so many games, it's going to be difficult because there's going to be fewer fewer um, training sessions. So if you look at last year, the, the key for Villa was that they were working Saturday to Saturday, yeah. weren't they, every week. So they had the time to prepare for a different opponent every week. And they had the time on the training pitch to go through it over and over and over again. It just won't be like that as much now because there'll be travelling and there'll be media duties and there'll be more rest days needed to recover. When Villa are playing in, in Europe on a Thursday night, they'll need the Friday off, Saturday training, Sunday game. It, it, it just gets a little bit intense during that group stage. So the first sort of four months of the season are really important. I think if you look back to West Ham last year, they had a little bit of a wobble at the start of the season because they were struggling to deal with... Um, the games in in uh, in Europe and then the Premier League. After a lot of the games directly after European games, they struggled. So that's just something that Villa are going to have to manage. They've got the best manager around to do that because yeah. Emery is exactly what you have to do um, to manage the two because he did that. He'd done that at Sevilla and Valencia previously and Villarreal. Um, obviously, and they won't have had the biggest squads, will they? I've no, from no. memory. Without sounding too negative, the criticism always of, of Villarreal, well, sorry, the, the criticism of Villarreal when they had their two um, their, their two seasons in, in Europe under Emery was that they, their, their league form struggled, they suffered when they, when they uh, progressed deeply in, into the European competition. So it's just something Villa are going to have to manage over the course of the season. They're going to have to split the season up into probably three parts. You're going to have to look at the start. They really do need to get off to a decent start at the Premier League to give them a bit of stability and then allow perhaps to, when you, if Villa do get out of the group stage of, of the Europa Conference League and the game starts to get a little bit tougher, perhaps they can start focusing, like West Ham did towards the back end when they played um, Altmar and, and uh, Fiorentina in the final. They started focusing on, on the Europa Conference League, playing their best players in that division, uh, in that comp competition. It was the same for Fulham all those years ago, you know, 2009 when they got to the final. They didn't expect to have a long run in the Europa League, but then towards the latter stages, they were resting players in the Premier League so that they could be strong in the Europa, in the Europa League in the final um, and obviously lost in the 117th minute to a Sergio Aguero goal for Atletico Madrid. So it can be done and you can mix the two and look, you know, Villa don't want to sacrifice their European um Adventures. The fans are going to love it. You know that they're going to create memories for life, like so many other clubs have. You know, you, you speak to Wolverhampton Wanderers fans, and I try not to. Yeah, me too. But you know that they they had amazing memories away at Torino, um, Besiktas. They you know they had some great trips, and 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 those memories last a lifetime. So Villa Villa fans have got that to look forward to. It's just going to be difficult to manage the the two the two competitions as well as an FA Cup and a and a, and a Carabao Cup. So, um, but that's down to the manager, isn't it? You know, he's got to get the best out of the players. He's got to make sure they have enough rest time um, and get his tactics right. You're right, though. Villa have just got the perfect manager for this. He's an yeah. expert in this field. He knows exactly how to how to manage these things, and you know, he's he's not he's barely put a foot wrong since since coming in at Villa, but. We, we, if you could pick a manager to have in the Europa competition, yeah. he, you, you would, any team would probably <laughs> pick him. It's, it's absolutely, absolutely wild that he is the manager of, of Aston Villa. You, you've been writing about the Thursday Sunday thing. I read your article early, earlier on in the week. Just want to go into a, a little bit of detail around that because I, I think he's interesting. I don't think people realise perhaps the, the, the grind that that is. And talking, you've obviously spoken to people in the game around that place, and they, they're all saying similar things. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if you if you look back to God, six, seven, eight years ago, Southampton were the model club, weren't they? Yeah, they were the club that had, had had risen from League Two into the into the top sort of six of the of the Premier League, and they were getting to finals of of cup competitions. They were hiring good managers in Pochettino and Koeman. Um, you know, finishing top six, seven, eight for, for four seasons in a row, signing good players, losing big players, and then replacing them with good ones. Very similar to what Brighton are doing now. 
It's kind of been Southampton, Leicester, then Brighton, haven't they? Yes, and exactly you, that. You, you, they, Leicester and Southampton have obviously fell away massively, but you, it's difficult to stay. Stay. It's doing really, that, isn't it? it's really difficult to. It's really difficult to stay. So, so I spoke to Les Reed, who was the um, vice chairman at Southampton, and and had a couple of hours with him. Just wanted to pick his brains on on what it was like trying to build a squad for Europe, um, or to, or to prepare. A, a squad for Europe, you know, and, and build it in advance. And and some of his thoughts were really interesting, and and it reflects on what Villa are doing now in in some respects. Because you look at Tielemans, he's used to the Thursday Sunday routine because he's done that with Leicester. They've got to the Europa Conference League um, semi final last year, and had a run in the Champions League um, and Europa League. Torres obviously has done it with with uh, Villa Real. He's had three seasons in a row in Europe, so that's a good start for Villa. What Southampton did, they looked at Celtic and they got a lot of players from Celtic: Wanyama, yeah. Forster, Van Dijk, um, Stuart Armstrong. And one of the one of the plans around that was, well, if you can play if you can play for Celtic in front of forty odd thousand fans, you're um, you know you're ready for that tough environment environment. But also you're playing in the Champions League every every year, so you're used to that routine of having to travel to different parts and then get ready for another game at the weekend straight away. So they looked at that. They also looked at Feyenoord and Twente, um, you know, clubs that regular regularly qualified for for Europe, and that's why they got Tadic to replace Lalana, and that's why they got Graziano Pella to to replace Ricky Lambert. So for for a long time they were doing it really well, and. They they'd done all the right things. They built they built the squad as they wanted it to, one that was durable and one that was ready for Thursday and Saturday, uh, Thursday and Sunday, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But it just gets difficult still. It just really gets difficult still. And some players that they're just not quite used to it. So what Southampton tried to do was was mix some of their academy players with some of their foreign signings and hope that that would work. And it did for a while. You know that they, they, they produced lots of good players, didn't they? You know. Um, James Ward Prowse. Uh, um, That's it. We can't think of any more. Harvest no, Luke Shaw sure. and, and Matt Target. You know, there the were players that came through that, that did well. Of course, there were, um, and and yeah, you know, for four seasons they did it, but then it gets it gets difficult. So for Villa, they just have to keep getting the, the decisions right. They have to make the right signings. They have to keep progressing, and it feels like they've got everything in place. You know they've got the right manager. They've got a good sporting director now. They've got a, good, a very good squad already. There's money there to spend. Okay, they have to look at FFP in the next sort of twelve to eighteen months because it is going to come back and bite them at some point. They can't continue to spend and not make sales. They don't have to sell some of the players that they want to keep to buy new players. That's not the case. But they do have to make sales. It's just to know, help so. facilitate, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Every club's doing it at the moment. You look. There's there's a massive trend in in the, between the big the so called big six clubs now, they're selling players in between it uh, in between themselves. You know Havertz to Arsenal, um, Zinchenko and Jesus to Arsenal, um, uh, who's, who's just Mount Yeah, you know the, 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 before you didn't used to see too many of these transfers between the top six clubs. Now no. you're seeing it more and more because clubs have to be mindful of FFP. If they get a good offer for a, for a player who's um, that they can't turn down. They, they take it. So Villa are going to have to look at the players like Dendonka, Sanson, Keenan Davis, uh, Nakamba, players that they need to get a bit of money back for. Coutinho might be one that they perhaps look to sell and, and, and get a big wage off the wage bill and get some money perhaps from Saudi Arabia. Let's see how that develops. Um, but yeah, let's make it clear. Villa don't have to sell to buy, but they have to be very mindful of FFP because if they continue purchasing players at the rate that they are now, um, which they have been for a couple of seasons. It's gonna, it's gonna catch up on them eventually. And look, Villa do still want to make a couple of big signings. They're interested in Chiesa at, at Juventus. They want to sign him. The feedback we're getting from Chiesa is, is, is that at this point he's not interested in joining Villa. We'll see if that develops. Joe Felix is another player that Emery absolutely adores and wants to sign. Don't think they will be able to have the money uh, to be able to sign him permanently. But they might try and be creative with a loan deal. Again, we knew that in January, Felix didn't fancy coming to Villa. He wanted to go to a Champions League club. So um, he, he moved to Chelsea. So he went to 12th place, Chelsea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. Yeah, good point, Dan. Um, so, you know, Villa are very ambitious. Diaby at, at Leverkusen as well is, is another guy they've got eyes on. So they want to get a, a, a very high-profile 
perhaps expensive um, attacking player into the squad. So that's going to be costly as well. So yeah, it's just something they need to be mindful of. You're talking about Felix, who we know that Emery did want in January. That, to me, feels a little bit more plausible, well, quite a lot more plausible now than it felt then, especially with what's going on with him at Atleti. Chelsea aren't going to sign him. Best one in the world, I don't think, around Madrid, Barcelona, Liverpool, Man City. I don't think those teams are, are, are coming in for him. Tottenham have just signed Madison. Newcastle seem to have their attention elsewhere. So that, to me, feels like something that could happen. And we know that Villa are keen to work with Mendes as well. And you say about getting creative, maybe if they work with Mendes again, like they did to get Emery in, there's something that can be had. There, Villa, Villa might be able to pull him in. After probably the biggest worry would be that Saudi Arabia try and try and pull him in and perhaps perhaps he goes there because that is becoming a, a not very likable trend for me. Well, in, yeah, in football. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, look, you know, if if Villa, if Villa perhaps look at moving Coutinho on and getting um, and, and try to get that. Look, they're in the conversation for Felix. Okay. For sure. Do you, know, do you know who else is in that conversation or? I, I just know that Villa are interested, but I don't know whether they will be able to get him or not because the conversations from last time was that he wasn't interested in coming. So whether that changes six months on, we'll have to see. He's lost his number at Atletico Madrid and, and that wasn't the right move for him, really. He's a great player, but you, I like Simeone, but you look at the way they play, that just does not suit that player at all. It's a, it, it's a bad fit. It, it, it's been a, not a great move for him and it was a lot of money for the club as well. But you sound like Villa want so a Felix type. And then you've named a couple of wingers as well. Is, you, so it wouldn't be a Felix at the expense of a of a, of a wide player. Because Villa, Villa need a wide player, I, I would say. Yeah. Someone with a bit of pace in the team. Yeah. I mean, look, you know, you, you ask any manager, ideally, he'd love a, he'd love a striker, a winger and a, and a sort of, a, a you know, an attacking midfield slash number 10 type. Um, it's just what Villa can do. They need to get a bit creative with, with various things. Um, but I'm, I think they they're, they're, they're still... There's still money there for them to go and get one big deal. So, um, look, we, we we know Emery loves his wingers, and um, yeah, Nico Williams is a player that he certainly wanted. Um, don't think they'll be able to get that one done because he wants to. Uh, it looks like he's going to extend at Bilbao again. Not done yet, but doesn't look likely. Um, but yeah, you know, we know that wide player is 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 the key for Villa first because. You know, it's, it's difficult for Villa to sign a striker, I would say, because they've got Ollie Watkins. He's the the main man. You've used the Harry Kane example before, and I think that's a good good example. They're completely different types of player, but I think it's a good example because Tottenham have always struggled to get a player to kind of back him up because they know they're not going to play, so they have to sign wide players who could block Rashad and people who can play wide and, mm. and then play up front as well. The way Villa play, Watkins is probably always going to be in the team. Arch is going to come back. And, and get a chance. So when we're saying Villa need a forward, I think the forward is probably that the, the RB type or the Chiesa type. I don't think it's a, yeah. a goal scorer. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I, it will be. I think it will be a wide player who can play up front as well. And then you've got Archer and du- Duran to turn to if you need to. Whether one of those goes on loan, we'll wait. And I see. think Duran will go on loan. I do. Based on no knowledge whatsoever, it's just a, 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 an opinion. Yeah, I mean, look, you've got to see our preseason. Um, See how preseason goes. Um, you know, he, he could he could he could really hit the ground running in preseason, score a lot of goals, and that that might change um, people's thinking of him. Um, not not that a decision has been made on him anyway yet. So look, there, there's lots of interest in Villa's younger players. So many Championship clubs have, have inquired about various players, but it's just a bit of an awkward stage for for Championship clubs at the moment because um, Premier League clubs like Villa are looking at their squad, they're deciding which players they think that they can keep. They want they typically tend to take a big group um to pre season tours with them. You know, you'll see Tottenham and Liverpool and Man United and um and Chelsea and Brentford and Newcastle, etc., all taking big squads with them. Um because 'cause that's typically how it works. And then after that, after the the tours, the loan market opens up a little bit and you start to see a few more moving. Um and that's when a lot of championship clubs will will be coming in for, for various Villa players. Yeah, the likes of a rogue, but he'll, he'll want to have a look at him, only as well. Someone, I think, I imagine he's a good player that Emery would, would quite like, actually. But he'll want to have a look at him in yeah. the flesh because he's a player he hasn't met really until this week, or hasn't won't have seen, won't have seen at training at all because he was on on loan last season. So it'd be interesting to see how how that pans out. There's and some Bogard reaction. as well, you know, yeah. Bogard's at a similar level. Ram, to Aaron Ramsey, you know, I think I think Ramsey's still injured. I'm not sure. Um, yeah. well, obviously, Jake, you know, Jacobs now injured, a very a very bad. Broken, a broken metatarsal, so a bad injury. 
um, out for a, for a couple of months, which is a blow. Um, and yeah, you know, obviously Ramsey missed Middlesbrough's playoff campaign um, and was back at Bodymore Heath at the back end of last season. Just need to check up on him, see, see where he's at. Okay. Uh, so <clears> someone, asked, someone asked this in the, in the question, actually, so Villa, Villa's transfer strategy, you, you've mentioned already, you know, the two players that they've signed have got that, that Thursday, Sunday experience. Uh, essentially, Tillemans knows the Premier League as well. He, from the kind of, he won't have to move house, I imagine. So he's he's in he kind of in the the Midlands area. Let's say about the kind of squad registration rules because they're very they're very different in, in in Europe. I know this from my extensive playing of a football manager <laughs> in, in my life. Sometimes it can be really hard. You suddenly in Europe and you go to look at how you're building your squad and how you register players, and you think, oh no, this doesn't work at, at all. Villa don't have like. It sounds silly, really, but Villa don't have, the, the registration rules are, t- are tough for Villa because I think you you have to have eight players. I think it is who are who are homegrown in terms of have trained in England at the from the ages of fifteen to to, to twenty one. You also have the space to register four homegrown academy players as as well who've co- who've come through the academy. But Villa Villa don't really have that, which probably means they're going to have to leave spare slots in their squad. Does that mean that Villa Villa's transfer activity or so we've just spoke about Felix and Kaiser, so that completely rules out what I'm what I'm about to say. Would Villa be more inclined to target like a domestic based player to try and fulfil those requirements with the registration? Um I'm gonna to be totally honest and say I'm a little bit unsure on on that question. I, I I need to do a little bit more research on the exact makeup. Like football of, managers, what you need to do? I'm not a gamer, so I don't play any. I don't play anything like that, so I'm not totally aware. And because Villa are new into Europe, um, I obviously haven't got the background of, of knowing that. But I'll look into that and yeah. perhaps maybe do a story. It's interesting. On that. I don't want to answer that now, um, okay. but because I, I honestly don't know and, and I haven't got the background to know. But I can speak to various people. Um, and uh, and find out those details uh, and and obviously reflect what Villa's um, feeling is on that. But at the moment, I don't know. So sorry, I, sure, but, no. uh, a bit of a cop out, but I genuinely. No, don't no. Know. It's better to be honest than pretend. Pretend you know. Plenty of people do podcasts pretending oh, they know, they know never, about things. Ever, that, never that ever they don't pretend know, but... to know anything. That's the uh, that's the first rule in journalism. Never make anything up. You don't, would expect always a, do your research. <laughs> you would expect a global Greg Evans to be au okay with the European I should know, yeah, though, but you know, you? I'm, that, I'm that, sorry. That I've, I've, I've got to be honest, I don't know. But I, I did, look into it. I'm in a lot of loads of Villa WhatsApp groups, but I, I did. I'm in a group with the, with the lads, and I did some like basic maths of how I think it would, would work out. And Villa, they're, they're tight with even being able to sign a couple more players. I think they can probably get. Two, two more in and a, and, a, and a backup keeper, but they're actually their registration. It, it's quite tight. We've really been able to fulfil the requirements for for the Europa competition, so it's an interesting one. You should, you should have a look into it. Yeah, yeah. I'll look into it sure. anyway. But I, I think that, that that's yeah. the kind of thing that could keep someone like Chambers around because mm, they don't mm. have they don't, they, they're tight. They're really really tight on the numbers that that, that are needed to be to be required. And if they do sign a backup goalkeeper, for example. I think it would have to be a British goalkeeper. Yeah, I mean that that would that would make sense. But I mean, it, just just thinking out loud, it, it, they're, they're going to look to some of the youngsters, I think, and use them and use them more often. Interesting. No, it's interesting. Let me get the. Uh, I think we've covered quite a lot. Oh, Ashley Young. I wanted to do Ashley Young, didn't I? Um, so he put out kind of a, an Instagram post, kind of a bit late, but a but a farewell post on Instagram. Looks like he's moving to to Everton. Greg seems to be picking up his golf clubs or something at the moment. Not sure. Not sure what he what he's doing. I'm just charging up my laptop. He's charging to up his laptop. <laughs> ever, ever ever the professional. There we go. I've heard the noise. It, it, yeah. It's in. So Ashley Young posted on his Instagram yesterday, kind of a farewell message, thanking the Villa fans, thanking people at the club. Looks like he's moving to to Everton. To, which I find a bit of a strange move if I'm, I'm being perfectly honest they've already got a couple of ageing fullbacks. yeah well I mean look it's Sean Dyche it's Sean Dyche Sean Dyche Sean Dyche I, I believe he played with him at Watford um, and yeah, he, he did and, you're and right Dyche also tried to sign him for Burnley um, yeah. bef- before he went to Villa and um, it, it was literally between the two clubs and, and Villa came in with a, with a, with a, a more exciting deal and, and obviously the chance for, for, for Ashley to return to, to Villa was more appealing but yeah, Dyche has been on his case for a very long time, so that doesn't surprise me. Um, be interested to see how he gets on. Yeah, I mean, he, n- absolutely no signs of slowing down last season. Were there? I thought getting he was better, excellent. if anything. Yeah, I thought he was excellent, and Emery spoke really positively about him. So it came as a bit of a surprise that he, did, surprised. That he didn't that he didn't get uh, you know another year, another extension. Um, you know, whether Villa open it, anything up for him in, in a coaching um, role in the future remains to be seen, but. 
yeah, fair play to him. He's going to have another crack at the Premier League another year, and, and, and I think he'll do well for Everton. Yeah, I, not not resentment. That's not the right word. But in his in his comments on his on his Instagram, he did. It sounded like he was a little bit hurt to me mm. about not being told that he was going to go before the season started. I mean, this will be purely speculation on on our behalf. Do you almost think Villa will if they had a quali- if they hadn't a qualifier for Europe, perhaps? He would. They would have kept him on. It kind of feels a little sure. bit like that. No, I don't. I think. Look, I think Emery had made up his mind. I, I don't think a decision like that would be would be made based on on Europe, European qualification or not. Clearly, Emery had made up his mind. He's the man making the decisions, and he decided not to keep him. So, um, a bit disappointing for, for Young. You could tell by his sort of on on field speech. Uh, at the that. part that he wanted to stay, yeah, it was obvious. Um, and I think he did enough to warrant it. You know, he couldn't very, have done any more, so very, very important person in the dressing room. I remember when Stephen Gerrard got sacked and, and was sacked, and you know, he stepped up immediately, young, and said, to, you know, look to, to club staff, if there's anything we, we need. You need for me. I'm here. You need to do any interviews or anything to talk about it. I'm here. Um, you know, he rounded the players and sort of got them all together and you know said that things need to get better and things need to change. It's not all down on the manager. It's down to us as well. Um, so yeah, somebody who you just really want in the group because he he fully gets it, doesn't he? Yeah, but fair play. Like he could not have done any more to to get get a new deal. Nice in a way that he's gone out on a on a high. In us, in in us qualify yeah. for Europe, he kind of said in his statement as well that he left Villa where he wanted to leave them in 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 Europe. He probably at times thought absolutely no chance of we getting into Europe <laughs> at the end of my end of my second year, but but they did it. And credit to him, he credit he's a credit to himself, a credit to football, and you know what a player. And we'll I think with the two stints now, really goes down in history as a, as a real key Villa player, one one of the best of the Premier League era. Actually, young, I, I would say now, I've just, I think. The way he played last season, even that, remember that Man City game when he came yeah, on and he was yeah. just running next to De Bruyne, and I just thought, how <laughs> yeah. is this? And he had such a good game. I thought, how is this happening? And he just got better as the, as the season went on. Played an awful lot of games for Villa as well because Cash had injuries and, and form issues at, at times. He he will be not only a huge miss off the pitch, but you know he probably need he probably does need to replace. I'm saying with tight on transfers, mm. he probably needs replacing Ashley Young because. Constant might play some football there, I guess. So that's my assumption of what of what will happen at the moment if they don't sign a right back. But what what a servant to Aston Villa. Just looking through the questions. And to be fair, I think we've covered quite a lot of the stuff that, that people were asking. Simon T is calling us the Spice Boys for some reason. I'm not sure what, what that's in, 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 in reference to. But uh yeah. We kind of, we have kind of covered everything that any uh, that every, everyone's asking. That's good. Yeah. you are you you going are you going to the US, Greg? I can't remember if I. No, no, I'm it. not. I'm. Uh, not I'm covering the the Open, uh, the golf in Liverpool. That's true. So. Love. Makes complete uh, sense. I mean, look, you know, I cannot turn down that opportunity. So. <laughs> no, well, obviously not. <laughs> I'll be absolutely buzzing. So yeah, but I'd probably mute my Twitter notifications over the next week or good, so because I'm anyway. Um, to be honest, lots of great questions from people. Thank you ever so much for the interaction. But I do think that we have covered it. Covered it all. So, yeah. That's good then. There we go. Yeah. With a comprehensive podcast, Greg, quality over quantity. That's what we aim for on 1874. I haven't done one for a few years, but there wasn't loads to talk about. In fairness, I'd rather come on and, and do a show and cover everything in, in one podcast than ju- to just do it in dribs and drabs and it not, be, not yeah. be interesting. I think we covered we covered a lot there. So, yeah, there is some news coming about, about the channel that will probably come out. I'll give myself seven days. I'll say in the next week, you'll find out more about what's going on with, with the channel. Obviously, you, you know, seen on Twitter last night, Ty said that he's stepping back and, and not doing it anymore. We're well, not doing any form of, of podcast or spaces or, or anything anymore. Just thank him for everything he's done all the times he's come on. He's, he's been great, Ty, obviously, a, a great mate to me as well over the years. But there are some wider changes coming to, coming to the channel, which I will explain in due course. So keep your ears, ears peeled. You can't get your ears peeled. You can keep your eyes peeled and keep your ear to the ground. Can't you, Greg? My my homeboy. That's my what you can do. That's what you can do <laughs> on, on this channel. Don't forget to subscribe wherever you're getting your podcast from and leave us a few comments as well and give us a like if you have enjoyed the podcast. Oh, if Greg's going to the open, I've probably got absolutely no chance of getting a podcast out of him out of him next week. But yeah, it should be, sure should be all right. Out. I've I've got a hotel room. So. Oh, he'll be he'll, he'll, he'll have the time. So yeah, we'll we'll do some podcasts. And if anything happens, of course, someone myself and someone or myself and Greg will jump on and, and talk about it. Thanks ever so much for listening or watching.